138. Another favorite proof of ball earthers is the appearance from an observer on shore of ships' hulls being obfuscated by the water and disappearing from view when sailing away towards the horizon. Their claim is that ships' hulls disappear before their mastheads because the ship is beginning its declination around the convex curvature of the ball earth. Once again, however, their hasty conclusion is drawn from a faulty premise, namely that only on a ball earth could this phenomenon occur. The fact of the matter is that the law of perspective on plane surfaces dictates and necessitates the exact same occurrence. For example, a girl wearing a dress walking away towards the horizon will appear to sink into the earth the farther away she walks. Her feet will disappear from view first, and the distance between the ground and the bottom of her dress will gradually diminish until, after a half a mile, it seems like her dress is touching the ground as she walks on invisible legs. Such is the case on plane surfaces. The lowest parts of objects receding from a given point of observation necessarily disappear before the highest. 139. Not only is the disappearance of ships' hulls explained by the law of perspective on flat surfaces, it is proven undeniably true with the aid of a good telescope. If you watch a ship sailing away into the horizon with the naked eye until its hull has completely disappeared from view under the supposed curvature of the earth, then look through a telescope, you will notice the entire ship quickly zooms back into view, hull and all, proving that the disappearance was caused by the law of perspective, not by a wall of curved water. This also proves that the horizon is simply the vanishing line of perspective from your point of view, not the alleged curvature of the Earth. 140. Foucault's pendulums are often quoted as proof of a rotating Earth, but upon closer investigation prove the opposite. To begin with, Foucault's pendulums do not uniformly swing in any one direction. Sometimes they rotate clockwise and sometimes counterclockwise. Sometimes they fail to rotate and sometimes they rotate far too much. The behavior of the pendulum actually depends on 1. the initial force beginning its swing, and 2. the ball and socket joint, which most readily facilitates circular motion over any other. The supposed rotation of the earth is completely inconsequential and irrelevant to the pendulum's swing. If the alleged constant rotation of the earth affected pendulums in any way, then there should be no need to manually start pendulums in motion. If the Earth's diurnal rotation caused the 360-degree uniform diurnal rotation of pendulums, then there should not exist a stationary pendulum anywhere on Earth. 141. The Coriolis effect is often said to cause sinks and toilet bowls in the northern hemisphere to drain spinning in one direction, while in the southern hemisphere causing them to spin the opposite way, thus providing proof of the spinning ball Earth. Once again, however, just like Foucault's pendulum spinning either which way, sinks and toilets in the northern and southern hemispheres do not consistently spin in any one direction. Sinks and toilets in the very same household are often found to spin opposite directions, depending entirely upon the shape of the basin and the angle of the water's entry, not the supposed rotation of the earth. 142. People claim that if the earth were flat, they should be able to use a telescope and see clear across the oceans. This is absurd, however, as the air is full of precipitation, especially over the oceans, and especially at the lowest, densest layer of atmosphere, is not transparent. Picture the blurry haze over roads on hot, humid days. Even the best telescope will blur out long before you could see across an ocean. You can, however, use a telescope to zoom in much more of our flat Earth than would be possible on a ball 25,000 miles in circumference. 143. People claim that if the Earth were flat, with the sun circling over and around us, we should be able to see the sun from everywhere, all over the earth, and there should be daylight, even at night time. Since the sun is not 93 million miles away, but rather just a few thousand, and shining down like a spotlight, once it has moved significantly far enough away from your location, it becomes invisible beyond the horizon, and daylight slowly fades until it completely disappears. If the sun were 93 million miles away and the earth a spinning ball, the transition from daylight to night would instead be almost instantaneous as you pass the terminator line. 144. Pictures of the moon appearing upside down in the southern hemisphere and right side up in the north are often cited as proof of the ball earth, but once again upon closer inspection provide another proof of the flat model. In fact, Time-lapse photography shows the moon itself turns clockwise like a wheel as it circles over and around the Earth. You can find pictures of the moon at 360 degrees of various inclination from all over the Earth, simply depending on where and when the picture was taken. 145. Heliocentrists believe the moon is a ball, even though its appearance is clearly that of a flat luminous disk. 
We only ever see the same one face, albeit at various inclinations, of the moon, yet it is claimed that there is another dark side of the moon which remains hidden. NASA states the moon spins opposite the spin of the Earth in such a perfectly synchronized way that the motions cancel each other out, so we will conveniently never be able to observe the supposed dark side of the moon outside of their terrible, fake CGI images. The fact of the matter is, however, if the moon were a sphere, observers in Antarctica would see a different face from those at the equator, yet they do not. Just the same flat face rotated at various degrees. 146. The Ball Earth model claims the moon orbits around the Earth once every 28 days, yet it is plain for anyone to see that the moon orbits around the Earth every single day. The moon's orbit is slightly slower than the sun's, but follows the sun's same path from tropic to tropic, solstice to solstice, making a full circle over the Earth in just under 25 hours. 147. The Ball Earth model claims the sun is precisely 400 times larger than the moon and 400 times further away from Earth, making them falsely appear exactly the same size. Once again, the Ball model asks us to accept as coincidence something that cannot be explained other than by natural design. The sun and moon occupy the same amount of space in the sky and have been measured with sextants to be of equal size and equal distance, so claiming otherwise is against our eyes, experience, experiments, and common sense. 148. Quoting Earth Not a Globe by Samuel Robotham, It is found by observation that the stars come to the meridian about four minutes earlier every 24 hours than the sun, taking the solar time as the standard. This makes 120 minutes every 30 days and 24 hours in the year, hence all the constellations have passed before or in advance of the sun at that time. This is the simple fact as observed in nature, but the theory of rotundity and motion on axes and in an orbit has no place for it. Visible truth must be ignored because this theory stands in the way and prevents its votaries from understanding it. 149. Throughout thousands of years, the same constellations have remained fixed in their same patterns without moving out of position whatsoever. If the Earth were a big ball spinning around a bigger sun, spinning around a bigger galaxy, shooting off from the biggest bang, as NASA claims, it is impossible that the constellations would remain so fixed. Based on their model, we should, in fact, have an entirely different night sky every single night and never repeat exactly the same star pattern twice. 150. If Earth were a spinning ball, it would be impossible to photograph star trail time lapses turning perfect circles around Polaris anywhere but the North Pole. At all other vantage points, the stars would be seen to travel more or less horizontally across the observer's horizon due to the alleged thousand mile per hour motion beneath their feet. In reality, however, Polaris' surrounding stars can always be photographed turning perfect circles around the central star all the way down to the Tropic of Capricorn. 151. If Earth were a spinning ball revolving around the Sun, it would actually be impossible for star trail photos to show perfect circles even at the North Pole. Since the Earth is also allegedly moving 67,000 miles per hour around the Sun, the Sun moving 500,000 miles per hour around the Milky Way, and the entire galaxy going 67 million miles per hour, these four contradictory motions would make star trail time lapses all show irregular curved lines. 152. In 2003, three university geography professors collaborated in an experiment to prove that the state of Kansas is indeed actually flatter than a pancake. Using topographical geodetic surveys covering over 80,000 square miles, it was determined that Kansas has a flatness ratio of 0.9997 over the entire state, while the average pancake, precisely measured using a confocal laser microscope, comes in at 0.957, making Kansas thereby literally flatter than a pancake. 153. Quoting Reverend Thomas Milner's Atlas of Physical Geography, we find that vast areas exhibit a perfectly dead level, scarcely arise existing through 1,500 miles from the Carpathians to the Urals. South of the Baltic, the country is so flat that a prevailing north wind will drive the waters of the Statner Half into the mouth of the Oder and give the river a backwards flow 30 or 40 miles. The plains of Venezuela and New Granada in South America, chiefly on the left of the Orinoco, are termed Elanos, or level fields. Often, in the space of 270 square miles, the surface does not vary a single foot. The Amazon only falls 12 feet in the last 700 miles of its course. The La Plata has only a descent of 1 33rd of an inch per mile. 154. 
The Felix Baumgartner Red Bull dive outside camera shows the same amount of curvature of Earth from surface level to jump height, proving it to be a deceiving fish-eyed wide-angle lens, while the inside regular camera shows a perfectly flat horizon eye level at 128,000 feet, which is only consistent with a flat plane. 155. Some people claim to have seen the curvature of the Earth out their airplane windows. The glass used in all commercial airplanes, however, is curved to remain flush with the fuselage. This creates a slight effect mixed with the confirmation bias people mistake for being the alleged curvature of the Earth. In actuality, the fact that you see the horizon at eye level at 35,000 feet out both port and starboard windows proves the Earth is flat. If the Earth were a ball, no matter how big, the horizon would stay exactly where it was, and you would have to look down further and further to see the horizon at all. Looking straight out the window at 35,000 feet, you should see nothing but outer space from the port and starboard windows, as the Earth and horizon are supposed to be below you. If they are visible at eye level outside both windows, it's because the Earth is flat. 156. People also claim to see curvature in GoPro or other high-altitude camera footage of the horizon. While it is true that the horizon often appears convex in such footage, it just as often appears concave or flat depending on the tilt and movement of the camera. The effect is simply a distortion due to wide-angle lenses. In lens corrected and footage taken without wide-angle technology, all amateur high-altitude horizon shots appear perfectly flat. 157. If gravity magically dragged the atmosphere along with the spinning ball Earth, that would mean the atmosphere near the equator would be spinning at over a thousand miles per hour, the atmosphere over the mid-latitudes would be spinning around 500 miles per hour, and gradually slower to the poles where the atmosphere would be unaffected at zero miles per hour. In reality, however, the atmosphere at every point on Earth is equally unaffected by this alleged force, as it has never been measured or calculated and proven non-existent by the ability of airplanes to fly unabated in any direction without experiencing any such atmospheric changes. 158. If gravity magically dragged the atmosphere along with the spinning ball Earth, that would mean the higher the altitude, the faster the spinning atmosphere would have to be turning around the center of rotation. In reality, however, if this were happening, then rain and fireworks would behave entirely differently as they fell down through progressively slower and slower spinning atmosphere. Hot air balloons would also be forced steadily faster eastwards as they ascended through the ever-increasing atmospheric speeds. 159. If there were progressively faster and faster spinning atmosphere, the higher the altitude, that would mean it would have to abruptly end at some key altitude where the fastest layer of gravitized spinning atmosphere meets the supposed non-gravitized, non-spinning, non-atmosphere of infinite vacuum space. NASA has never even mentioned what altitude this impossible feat allegedly happens, but it is easily philosophically refuted by the simple fact that vacuums cannot exist connected to non-vacuums while maintaining the properties of a vacuum. Not to mention, the effect such a transition would have on a rocket spaceship would be disastrous. 160. It is impossible for rockets or any type of jet propulsion engines to work in the alleged non-atmosphere of vacuum space, because without air or atmosphere to push against, there is nothing to propel the vehicle forwards. Instead, the rockets and shuttles would be sent spinning around their own axis uncontrollably in all directions like a gyroscope. It would be impossible to fly to the moon or go in any direction whatsoever, especially if gravity were real and constantly sucking you towards the closest, densest body. 161. If Earth were really a ball, there would be no reason to use rockets for flying into outer space anyway, because simply flying an airplane straight at any altitude for long enough should and would send you off into outer space. To prevent their airplanes from flying tangent to the ball Earth, pilots would have to constantly course correct downwards, or else within just a few hours, the average commercial airliner traveling 500 miles per hour would find themselves lost in outer space. The fact that this never happens, artificial horizons remain level at pilots' desired altitudes and do not require constant downward adjustments, proves the Earth is not a ball. 162. All NASA and other space agencies' rocket launches never go straight up. Every rocket forms a parabolic curve, peaks out, and inevitably starts falling back to Earth. The rockets which are declared successful are those few which don't explode or start falling too soon, but make it out of range of spectator view before crashing down into restricted waters and recovered. 
There is no magic altitude where rockets or anything else can simply go up, 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 and then suddenly just start free-floating in space. This is all a science fiction illusion created by wires, green screens, dark pools, some permed hair, and zero-g planes. 163. NASA and other space agencies have been caught time and again with air bubbles forming and floating off in their official outer space footage. Astronauts have also been caught using scuba space gear, kicking their legs to move, and astronaut Luca Parmitano even almost drowned when water started filling up his helmet while allegedly on a spacewalk. It is admitted that astronauts train for their spacewalks in underwater training facilities like NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab, but what is obvious from their space bubbles and other blunders is that all official spacewalk footage is also fake and filmed underwater. 164. Analysis of many interior videos from the International Space Station have shown the use of camera tricks such as green screens, harnesses, and even wildly permed hair to achieve a zero-gravity type effect. Footage of the astronauts seemingly floating in the zero gravity of their space station is indistinguishable from Vomit Comet zero-g airplane footage. By flying parabolic maneuvers, this zero-g floating effect can be achieved over and over again, then edited together. For longer uncut shots, NASA has been caught using simple wires and green screen technology. 165. NASA claims one can observe the International Space Station pass by overhead proving its existence, yet analysis of the ISS seen through zoom cameras proves it to be some type of hologram or drone, not a physical floating space base. As you can see in my documentary ISS hoax, when zooming in and out, the ISS dramatically and impossibly changes shape and color, displaying a prismatic rainbow effect until coming into focus much like an old television turning on and off. 166. The geostationary communications satellite was first created by Freemason science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke and supposedly became science fact just a decade later. Before this, radio, television, and navigation systems like Loran and DECA were already well established and worked fine using only ground-based technologies. Nowadays, huge fiber optic cables connect the internet across oceans, gigantic cell towers triangulate GPS signals, and ionospheric propagation allows radio waves to be bounced all without the aid of the science fiction bestseller known as satellites. 167. Satellites are allegedly floating around in the thermosphere, where temperatures are claimed to be upwards of 4,530 degrees Fahrenheit. The metals used in satellites, however, such as aluminum, gold, and titanium, have melting points of 1,221, 1,948, and 3,034 degrees respectively, all far lower than they could possibly handle. 168. So-called satellite phones have been found to have reception problems in countries like Kazakhstan with very few cell phone towers. If the Earth were a ball with 20,000 plus satellites surrounding, such blackouts should not regularly occur in any rural countryside areas. 169. So-called satellite TV dishes are almost always positioned at a 45 degree angle towards the nearest ground-based repeater tower. If TV antenna were actually picking up signals from satellites 100 plus miles away in space, most TV dishes should be pointing more or less straight up to the sky. The fact that satellite dishes are never pointing straight up, and almost always positioned at a 45 degree angle, proves they are picking up ground-based tower signals and not outer space satellites. 170. People even claim to see satellites with their naked eyes, but this is ridiculous considering they are smaller than a bus and allegedly 100 plus miles away. It is impossible to see anything so small that far away. Even using telescopes, no one claims to discern the shape of satellites, but rather describes seeing passing moving lights, which could easily be any number of things, from airplanes to drones to shooting stars or other unidentified flying objects. 171. NASA claims there are upwards of 20,000 satellites floating around Earth's upper atmosphere, sending us radio, television, GPS, and taking pictures of the planet. All these supposed satellite pictures, however, are admittedly composite images edited in Photoshop. They claim to receive ribbons of imagery from satellites, which must then be spliced together to create composite images of the Earth, all of which are clearly CGI and not photographs. If Earth were truly a ball, with 20,000 satellites orbiting, it would be a simple matter to mount a camera and take some real photographs. 
The fact that no real satellite photographs of the supposed ball earth exist in favor of NASA's ribbons of composite CG imagery is further proof that we are not being told the truth. 172. If you pick any cloud in the sky and watch for several minutes, two things will happen. The clouds will move and they will morph, gradually changing shape. In official NASA footage of the spinning ball Earth, such as the Galileo time-lapse video, however, clouds are constantly shown for 24 plus hours at a time and not moving or morphing whatsoever. This is completely impossible, further proof that NASA produces fake CGI videos and further evidence that Earth is not a spinning ball. 173. NASA has several alleged photographs of the ball Earth which show several exact duplicate cloud patterns. The likelihood of having two or three clouds of the exact same shape in the same picture is as likely as finding two or three people with the exact same fingerprints. In fact, it is a solid proof that the clouds were copied and pasted in a computer program and that such pictures showing a ball-shaped Earth are fakes. 174. NASA graphics artists have placed things like faces, dragons, and even the word sex into cloud patterns over their various ball Earth pictures. Their recent 2015 Pluto pictures even clearly have a picture of Disney's Pluto the dog layered into the background. Such blatant fraud goes unnoticed by the hypnotized masses, but provides further proof of the illegitimacy of NASA and their spinning ball planet mythos. 175. Professional photo analysts have dissected several NASA images of the ball Earth and found undeniable proof of computer editing. For example, images of the Earth allegedly taken from the moon have proven to be copied and pasted in as evidenced by rectangular cuts found in the black background around the Earth by adjusting brightness and contrast levels. If they were truly on the moon and Earth was truly a ball, there would be no need to fake such pictures. 176. When NASA's images of the ball Earth are compared with one another, the coloration of the land and oceans and relative size of the continents are consistently so drastically different from one another as to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the pictures are all fake. 177. In the documentary A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, we can watch official leaked NASA footage showing Apollo 11 astronauts Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins for almost an hour using transparencies and camera tricks to fake shots of a round Earth. They communicate over audio with Control in Houston about how to accurately stage the shot, and someone keeps prompting them on how to effectively manipulate the camera to achieve the desired effect. First, they blacked out all the windows except for a downward-facing circular one, which they aimed the camera towards from several feet away. This created the illusion of a ball-shaped Earth surrounded by the blackness of space, when in fact it was simply a round window in their dark cabin. Neil Armstrong claimed at this point to be 130,000 miles from the Earth, halfway to the moon. But when camera tricks were finished, the viewer could see for themselves the astronauts were not more than a couple dozen miles above the Earth's surface, likely flying in a high-altitude plane. 178. People claim Google Earth somehow proves the ball model without realizing that Google Earth is simply a composite program of images taken from high-altitude planes and street-level car cameras superimposed onto a CGI model of a ball Earth. The same could just as easily be molded onto a square Earth or any other shape, and therefore cannot be used as proof of Earth's rotundity. 179. If the Earth were constantly spinning eastward a thousand miles per hour, then airplane flight durations going eastward versus westwards should be significantly different. If the average commercial airliner travels 500 miles per hour, it follows that westbound equatorial flights should reach their destination at approximately thrice the speed as their eastbound return flights. In reality, however, the differences in east and westbound flight durations usually amount to a matter of minutes and nothing near what would occur on a thousand mile per hour spinning ball Earth. 180. The spinning ball model dictates that the Earth and atmosphere would be moving together at approximately 500 miles per hour at the mid latitudes where LA to New York City flights take place. The average commercial airliner traveling 500 miles per hour takes five and a half hours traveling east with the alleged rotation of the Earth, so the return flight west should take only 2.75 hours. But in fact, we find that the average New York to LA flight takes six hours, a flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 181. Flights eastwards with the alleged spin of the ball Earth from Tokyo to LA take an average of 10 and a half hours. 
Therefore, the return flights westwards against the alleged spin should take an average of five and a quarter hours, but in actual fact, take an average of 11 and a half hours, another flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 182. Flights eastward with the alleged spin of the ball Earth from New York to London take an average of seven hours. Therefore, the return flights westwards against the alleged spin should take an average of three and a half hours, but in actual fact, take an average of seven and a half hours, a flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 183. Flights eastward from Chicago to Boston with the alleged spin of the ball Earth take an average of two and a quarter hours. Therefore, the return flights westwards against the alleged spin should take an average of just over an hour. But in actual fact, take an average of two and three quarters hours. Once again, completely inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 184. Flights eastward from Paris to Rome with the alleged spin of the ball Earth take an average of two hours. Therefore, the return flights westward against the alleged spin should take an average of one hour, but in actual fact, have an average flight duration of two hours and ten minutes. A flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 185. We are told that the Earth and atmosphere spin together at such a perfect uniform velocity that no one in history has ever seen, heard, felt, or measured the supposed 1,000 mile per hour movement. This is then often compared to traveling in a car at uniform velocity, where we only feel the movement during acceleration or deceleration. In reality, however, even with eyes closed, windows up, over smooth tar in a luxury car, at a mere uniform 50 miles per hour, the movement absolutely can be felt. At 20 times this speed, Earth's imaginary 1,000 mile per hour spin would most certainly be noticeable, felt, seen, and heard by all. 186. People sensitive to motion sickness feel distinct unease and physical discomfort from motion as slight as an elevator or train ride. This means that the 1,000 mile per hour alleged uniform spin of the Earth has no effect on such people, but add an extra 50 miles per hour uniform velocity of a car and their stomach starts turning knots. The idea that motion sickness is nowhere apparent in anyone at 1,000 miles per hour, but suddenly comes about at 1,050 miles per hour, is ridiculous and proves the Earth is not in motion whatsoever. 187. The second law of thermodynamics, otherwise known as the law of entropy, along with the fundamental principles of friction and resistance, determine the impossibility of Earth being a uniformly spinning ball. Over time, the spinning ball Earth would experience measurable amounts of drag, constantly slowing the spin and lengthening the amount of hours per day. As not the slightest such change has ever been observed in all of recorded history, it is absurd to assume the Earth has ever moved an inch. 188. Over the years, NASA has twice changed their story regarding the shape of the Earth. At first, they maintained Earth was a perfect sphere, which later changed to an oblate spheroid flattened at the poles, and then changed again to being pear-shaped, as the southern hemisphere allegedly bulges out as well. Unfortunately for NASA, however, none of their official pictures show an oblate spheroid or pear-shaped Earth. All their pictures, contrary to their words, show a spherical, and clearly CGI fake, Earth. 189. The Bible, Quran, Srimad, Bhagavatam, and many other holy books describe and purport the existence of a geocentric stationary flat earth. For example, 1 Chronicles 16.30 and Psalm 96.10 both read, He has fixed the earth firm, immovable. And Psalm 93.1 says, The world also is established that it cannot be moved. The Bible also repeatedly affirms that the earth is outstretched as a plane, with the outstretched heavens everywhere above, not all around, giving a scriptural proof the earth is not a spinning ball. 190. Cultures the world over throughout history have all described and purported the existence of a geocentric stationary flat earth. Egyptians, Indians, Mayans, Chinese, Native Americans, and literally every ancient civilization on earth had a geocentric flat earth cosmology. Before Pythagoras, the idea of a spinning ball earth was non-existent, and even after Pythagoras, it remained an obscure minority view until 2,000 years later when Copernicus began reviving the heliocentric theory. 191. 
From Pythagoras to Copernicus, Galileo and Newton to modern astronauts like Aldrin Armstrong and Collins, to director of NASA and grand commander of the 33rd degree, C. Fred Kleinknecht, the founding fathers of the spinning ball mythos have all been Freemasons. The fact that so many members of this, the largest and oldest secret society in existence, have all been co-conspirators bringing about this literal planetary revolution is beyond the possibility of coincidence and provides proof of organized collusion in creating and maintaining this multi-generational deception. 192. Quoting Terra Firma by David Wardlaw Scott, the system of the universe as taught by modern astronomers being founded entirely on theory, for the truth of which they are unable to advance one single real proof, they have entrenched themselves in a conspiracy of silence and declined to answer any objections which may be made to their hypothesis. Copernicus himself, who revived the theory of the heathen philosopher Pythagoras and his great exponent Sir Isaac Newton, confessed that their system of a revolving earth was only a possibility and could not be proved by facts. It is only their followers who have decorated it with the name of an exact science, yea, according to them, the most exact of all the sciences. Yet one astronomer royal for England once said, speaking of the motion of the whole solar system, the matter is left in a most delightful state of uncertainty, and I shall be very glad if anyone can help me out of it. What a very sad position for an exact science to be in is this. 193. No child or unindoctrinated man in their right mind would ever conclude or even conceive, given to their own devices, based on their own personal observations, that the earth was a spinning ball revolving around the sun. Such imaginative theories, nowhere present in anyone's daily experience, require and have required massive amounts of constant propaganda to uphold the illusion. 194. From David Ward Lascott. Every member being taught, when a boy, that the earth was a great ball revolving at a very rapid rate around the sun, and when I expressed to my teacher my fears that the waters of the oceans would tumble off, I was told that they were prevented from doing so by Newton's great law of gravitation, which kept everything in its proper place. I presume that my continence must have shown some signs of incredulity, for my teacher immediately added, I can show you a direct proof of this. A man can whirl around his head a pail filled with water without it being spilt, and so, in like manner, can the oceans be carried round the sun without losing a drop. As this illustration was evidently intended to settle the matter, I then said no more upon the subject. Had such been proposed to me afterwards as a man, I would have answered somewhat as follows. Sir, I beg to say that the illustration you have given of a man whirling a pail of water around his head and the oceans revolving around the sun does not in any degree confirm your argument, because the water in the two cases is placed under entirely different circumstances, but, to be of any value, the conditions in each case must be the same, which here they are not. The pail is a hollow vessel which holds the water inside it, whereas, according to your teaching, the earth is a ball with a continuous curvature outside, which, in agreement with the laws of nature, could not retain any water. 195. Astronomers say the magical magnetism of gravity is what keeps the oceans of the world stuck to the ball earth. They claim that because the earth is so massive, by virtue of this mass it creates a magic force able to hold people, oceans, and atmosphere tightly clung to the underside of the spinning ball. Unfortunately, however, they cannot provide any practical example of this on a scale smaller than the planetary. A spinning wet tennis ball, for instance, has the exact opposite effect of the supposed ball earth. Any water poured over it simply falls off the sides, and giving it a spin results in water flying off 360 degrees like a dog shaking off after a bath. Astronomers concede the wet tennis ball example displays the opposite effect of their supposed ball earth, but claim that at some unknown mass, the magic adhesive properties of gravity suddenly kick in, allowing the spinning wet tennis ball earth to keep every drop of gravitized water stuck to the surface. When such an unproven theory goes against all experiments, experience, and common sense, it is high time to drop the theory. 196. Quoting Marshall Hall. In short, the sun, moon, and stars are actually doing precisely what everyone throughout all of history has seen them do. We do not believe what our eyes tell us because we've been taught a counterfeit system which demands that we believe what has never been confirmed by observation or experiment. 
That counterfeit system demands that the Earth rotate on an axis every 24 hours at a speed of over a thousand miles per hour at the equator. No one has ever, ever, ever seen or felt such movement, nor seen or felt the 67,000 mile per hour speed of Earth's alleged orbit around the Sun, or its 500,000 mile per hour alleged speed around a galaxy, or its retreat from an alleged Big Bang at over 67 million miles per hour. Remember, no experiment has ever shown the Earth to be moving. Add to that the fact that the alleged rotational speed we've all been taught as scientific fact must decrease every inch or mile one goes north or south of the equator, and it becomes readily apparent that such things as accurate aerial bombing in World War II, down a chimney from 25,000 feet with a plane going any direction at high speed, would have been impossible if calculated on an Earth moving below at several hundred miles per hour and constantly changing with the latitude. 197. Some people claim there is no motive for such a grand-scale deception, and that flat or ball makes no difference. By removing Earth from the motionless center of the universe, these masons have moved us physically and metaphysically from a place of supreme importance to one of complete nihilistic indifference. If the Earth is the center of the universe, then the ideas of God, creation, and a purpose for human existence are resplendent. But if the Earth is just one of billions of planets revolving around billions of stars and billions of galaxies, then the ideas of God, creation, and a specific purpose for Earth and human existence become highly implausible. By surreptitiously indoctrinating us into their scientific materialist sun worship, not only do we lose faith in anything beyond the material, we gain absolute faith in materiality, superficiality, status, selfishness, hedonism, and consumerism. If there's no God and everyone's just an accident, then all that really matters is me, me, me. They've turned Madonna, the mother of God, into a material girl living in a material world. Their rich, powerful corporations with slick sun cult logos sell us idols to worship, slowly taking over the world while we tacitly believe their science, vote for their politicians, buy their products, listen to their music and watch their movies, sacrificing our souls at the altars of materialism. To quote Morris Klein, the heliocentric theory, by putting the sun at the center of the universe, made man appear to be just one of a possible host of wanderers drifting through a cold sky. It seemed less likely that he was born to live gloriously and to attain paradise upon his death. Less likely, too, was it that he was the object of God's ministrations. 198. Some say that the idea of an intergenerational worldwide conspiracy to delude the masses sounds implausible or unrealistic. But these people need only familiarize themselves with the works and writings of Freemasons themselves, for example, John Robeson, who exposed this in his 1798 book, Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All the Religions and Governments of Europe, carried out in the secret meetings of the Freemasons, Illuminati, and Reading Societies. Supreme Commander of the 33rd Degree Albert Pike was quite forthcoming in several letters regarding the Masons' ultimate goal of world domination, and the Zionist Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, the exact plan by which this would be and has been carried out, is completely disclosed. 199 from Foundations of Many Generations by E. S. Gini. The only thing the fable of the revolving earth has done, it has shown the terrible power of a lie. A lie has the power to make a man a mental slave so that he dares not back the evidence of his own senses. To deny the plain and obvious movement of the sun he sees before him, when he feels himself standing on an earth utterly devoid of motion, at the suggestion of someone else, he's prepared to accept that he's spinning furiously around, when he sees a bird flying and gaining over the ground, he's prepared to believe that the ground is really traveling a great number of times faster than the bird. Finally, in order to uphold the imagination of a madman, he is prepared to accuse his maker of forming for him a sensiferous lie. 200. Finally, from Dr. Robotham. Thus we see that this Newtonian philosophy is devoid of consistency. Its details are the result of an entire violation of the laws of legitimate reasoning, and all its premises are assumed. It is, in fact, nothing more than an assumption upon assumption, and the conclusions derived therefrom willfully considered as things proved, and to be employed as truths to substantiate the first and fundamental assumptions. 
Such a juggle and jumble of fancies and falsehoods, extended and intensified as in theoretical astronomy, is calculated to make the unprejudiced inquirer revolt with horror from the terrible conjuration which has been practiced upon him, to sternly resolve to resist its further progress, to endeavor to overthrow the entire edifice, and to bury in its ruins the false honors which have been associated with its fabricators, and which still attach to its devotees. For the learning, the patience, the perseverance, and devotion for which they have ever been examples, honor and applause need not be withheld, but their false reasoning, the advantages they have taken of the general ignorance of mankind in respect to astronomical subjects, and the unfounded theories they have advanced and defended, cannot be otherwise than regretted, and ought to be, by every means possible, uprooted. For more information about our flat earth, Read The Flat Earth Conspiracy by Eric Dubay.